All living things, as tiny or insignificant as they might be, are incredibly complex creatures. Each one of them have gone through millions of years of generations upon generations to become what they are today. Many people often wonder what living things are made of, and that is cells. But how many cells are we made of? Or what is the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic organisms? Hi, my name is Mauricio, and you're watching Edutainment. Hey, welcome to Edutainment. Today we're going to talk about eukaryotic and prokaryotic organisms. But first of all, let's start from the most basic level. How many cells are we really made of, you might ask? Well, unless you're unicellular organisms such as amoebas, which are not, I hope, then you're made of many, many cells. How many? Well, it's estimated that a normal human is made out of 37 trillion cells or so. And if we were to line up all these cells end to end around the Earth, we could circle it almost 19 times. That's a heck of a lot of cells, isn't it? Yes, it is. Cells are really important. Thanks to all of these cells, we are now living our lives and thinking. And you're even watching this video right now thanks to them as well. There are many types of organisms, for they come all in different sizes, shapes and colors. There are organisms that are single-celled, and there are others that are multicellular as well. There are two main categories in the domain of living things that we are going to look into today. These are the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. The prokaryotes are the most basic type of the two. This is due to the fact that they are less complex in development and specialization. The prokaryotes lack of membrane-bound organelles, making it way less efficient for any chemical reaction to occur. These organisms also lack of a nucleus, and their DNA isn't even complete chromosomes, as it is only one circular chromosome with no histories. They also lack of a cytoskeleton, unlike eukaryotes. But interestingly enough, they do have a cell wall in most cases, and they also have a capsule, which protects the cells from engulfment by other cells. And in the cases of bacteria, it can make them more virulent for this exact reason. The prokaryotic cells are much smaller than eukaryotes, and they're unicellular organisms in most cases, although there are a few that are multicellular, though they are much less complex than eukaryotic multicellular organisms. This is the case of cyanobacteria, which at some point was believed to be a plant. Prokaryotes reproduce with binary fission, that is, with a form of reproduction that doesn't require meiosis, or in other words, they perform asexual reproduction only. Finally, if these cells have flagella or cilia to move, it is much less complex than that of the eukaryotes, and their flagella consists of only two protein building blocks. Prokaryotes are really interesting organisms, and they sure play a big role in our lives as bacteria, both good and bad, are prokaryotes, and this influences our lives as there are even more bacteria present in our bodies than there are eukaryotic cells. We carry approximately 100 trillion organisms just in our intestines. That sure is a heck of a lot of organisms. So if you ever feel lonely, remember this. There are 100 trillion or so organisms in your gut, and you mean the world to them. Now you have no excuses, so be happy. <laughs> okay, now for the real deal. Some of these bacteria help your body to break down certain kinds of foods, as well as ferment them or others help train your immune systems. These are really important to us. And there are also others that infect your body and cause diseases. And these affect our life as well, just in a different way. Now it's time to talk about eukaryotes. First of all, we, 
and all the complex organisms, including plants and animals, on Earth are made out of eukaryotes. Different from prokaryotes, our fellow eukaryotes are much more organized organisms, with really complex structures such as the cytoskeleton and the internal membranes. The most characteristic internal membrane is the nucleus, and it stores the DNA and protects it from degradation due to chemical reactants in the cell, in between other functions. These organisms have membrane-bound organelles. That makes the process inside the cell more efficient. Eukaryotes also vary in shapes and sizes, and they can be both unicellular and multicellular, though it is more common for eukaryotes to be multicellular. They are also much bigger than their fellow neighbors the prokaryotes, and some eukaryotes feast on these poor prokaryotes by engulfing them, just like it is the case with the unicellular amoebas, in a process called phagocytosis. Eukaryotes also contain their DNA in chromosomes, and the amount of chromosomes can vary from specimen to specimen. For example, we humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 in total, while animals like the northern lamprey, which is a type of jawless eel-like fish with lots of teeth, has 174 chromosomes. If eukaryotes have flagella or cilia, they are much more complex than those on the prokaryotes as well. Their flagella is much more complex as it contains multiple microtubules to form it. These organisms can also have a cell wall, but the ones that do have a much less chemically complex cell wall than those on the prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells also have a cytoskeleton. This works as a framework for the movement of organelles in the cell, as most of them are attached to it. And it also helps as a structural framework for the cell's shape, or in other words, it helps the cell keep its shape. Eukaryotes also have organelles that prokaryotes lack, such as the endoplasmic reticulums, the Golgi body, and they also have mitochondria and chloroplasts, depending on the organisms, of course. And these help the cell create ATP and sugars, respectively. These are needed for the cell to live. Eukaryotes can divide through mitosis and meiosis, mitosis being a sexual reproduction and meiosis being sexual reproduction. These are both much more complex than the division process of prokaryotes. Interestingly enough, some of these fellow eukaryotes actually lose their ability to reproduce or replicate due to its specialization, just like it is the case with red blood cells, which have no nucleus, no DNA, and almost no organelles. Finally, eukaryotes have longer lifespans than prokaryotes do because of their specialization and division of work. That makes the task easier for the cell, and prokaryotes live less because they have to do everything by themselves. So there you have it. Now you hopefully know a lot more about your carrots and prokaryotes than you used to. Well, unfortunately, we've reached the end of this video about the amazing carrots and prokaryotes. I really hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more awesome videos. See you soon. Hey, like the videos? Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. See you next time in Edutainment. Yeah. yeah.